I have a feeling that today's project is going to turn out really great. At this point, it should be expected that my videos and bad puns are a package deal. Though the jokes are bad, I do promise that I won't start beatboxing. Well, there's a lot to unpack with this project, so I'd better get started on decorating this panel. Today I'm going to decorate this actor door panel with the same colorful packing crate design that I used when I made my drop panel from a few years ago. I've already made videos about building a basic wall panel and a basic actor door panel, so for anyone interested in learning more about those projects, I've included links in the description. Although this panel was already painted with black paint, I'm going to proceed forward as though it was unpainted. This means that I'm going to start by painting the panel and the door with two coats of white primer and two coats of white paint. Before I get too far into this project, I want to briefly mention that all paints and all of the wood for this panel have been treated with the same fire retardant materials as detailed in the basic panel videos that I mentioned earlier. With the two coats of primer fully dried, I can move on to coating the panel with two coats of white paint. Since the final coat of paint is going to be UV reactive fluorescent paints, I want a very solid white base coat to make sure that the fluorescent paints really pop. This means that I need to fully cover the old black paint, or if it was new wood, fully covering the detail of the wood grain. Before I move on to painting the UV paints, I sanded everything down to smooth out any bumps in the previous coats of paint. Next, I'm going to use these scrap pieces of 1 quarter inch plywood to make the edges of the packing crate design. I ended up cutting multiple strips of wood at several different sizes. The sizes that I made are 2.5 inches wide, 2 inches, 1.5 inches, and 1 inch. These different sizes should give me enough variety to make a few different sized packing crates for this design. I think I made a few too many of these strips for this one panel. No worries though, I can just use the extra parts to make more of these types of panels a little bit later on. Now it's time to start laying out my design and figuring out what size each packing crate is going to be. The goal here is to disguise the door in such a way that guests won't even know that it's there. Obviously, either side of the door is going to have very tall and skinny boxes. The trick is to arrange everything in such a way that it fools the brain into not realizing that there is a separate rectangle shape in the middle of the panel. This means that I'm going to leave some open spaces and stagger everything in such a way that the brain will think that the packing crates are crossing the line around the door when they're really not. Since there is a 1 quarter inch gap all the way around the door between the door and the frame, and I typically have a 1 quarter inch space between packing crates, I'll be able to have some packing crates go right up to the edge of the door frame, as well as some can go right up to the edge of the door, and they'll still have the same spacing as everything else. This way, this panel, even though it's two separate pieces, it should blend right in with any other panels that I build with this design. With all of that said, it's time to check in with the guy on camera and see what he's working on. So far, I've cut all of the pieces for the packing crate on the lower right of the panel, and I'm working my way across from right to left. I'm doing things this way so I can properly space and stagger the packing crates as I go, working my way up from the bottom of the panel. To help with hiding the door, I want to arrange the crates to appear to be a bit haphazardly placed and avoid the perfect Tetris look, where everything fits together perfectly. Other than trying to hide the door, the reason that I want it to look this way is because it would be a bit more realistic if there were gaps between the crates instead of having all of the space completely filled in. It started raining as I was working on this, so I had to bring my chop saw inside and try to continue getting as much work done as possible while water was falling from the sky outside.
Having the first row of crates all close to being the same approximate height, as well as leaving some empty spaces between them, will work towards making the rectangular door appear to have an irregular shape. The next row of crates that go on top of the first ones will be shifted over in the opposite direction with gaps on the opposite side. The hope is that the staggered arrangement of the crates and having the top corners of the bottom layer of crates so close to the bottom corners of the second layer of crates will trick the mind into thinking that those crates are touching or closer than they actually are. For the top half of the door, I'm actually going to split it up into two tall skinny crates like the ones on the sides of the panel. I have a feeling that if I made this panel with only crates that were as wide as the door in the middle and skinny crates on the outside on the frame, it would make it even more obvious that the middle of the panel was the exact shape to be a doorway. Hopefully, mixing up the sizes of the crates in this way will make the shape of the door stand out less and not be as noticeable. Since the crates at the top of the panel are theoretically supposed to be further away than the ones towards the bottom, which are indeed closer to the guests, I used smaller trim boards as well as I made the boxes smaller to give a bit of a forced perspective look to them. Due to the fact that it was raining this day, and I only have so much space inside my shop to work, I decided to stop here for the day. I do have a few more trim boards to cut, mostly it's just a few cross boards that go in the middle of a few of the boxes. I'll come back and finish those up later on in the video. For now, it's time for a whole bunch of painting. So much painting. It's like it never ends. Just like I did with the panel and the door, each piece of trim board will get two coats of white primer and two coats of white paint. The difference is that these boards will get a final coat of UV reactive fluorescent white paint. I didn't mention this earlier, but the original scrap pieces of wood that I used to make these strips of wood are the leftover pieces from when I made my Victorian panel from the previous year. Since making that original video, I have built four more of them, and that's why I had so many scrap pieces to cut up for this project. Additionally, the majority of those boards were already treated with fire retardant, as well as they were painted with several layers of paint and primer on one side. Basically, because I saved those boards instead of throwing them away, I was able to make enough parts for this panel, as well as a few extras. To better show the UV reactive white paint being sprayed onto these boards, I decided to set up some black lights so I can see if I fully coated the boards or not. I think it's really cool being able to see the difference between the normal white paint and the fluorescent white paint as it's being sprayed. While that first batch of trim boards is drying, I'm going to take advantage of some clear weather and go ahead and start painting both parts of the panel with the different fluorescent colors. Unfortunately, I only have seven colors on hand. Those colors are red, pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Since there is a total of 10 packing crates on this entire panel, a few colors will have to be repeated. Due to this limitation, I carefully selected which crate was which color to make sure that similar colors weren't potentially next to one another and to make sure that this panel had a dynamic color scheme. With all of the fluorescent paints fully dry on the door, I went ahead and painted the entire perimeter as well as the spaces between the packing crates with a heavy coat of semi-gloss black paint. Now that I have all of the basic paint finished on the front of the door, I can move on to painting the framed panel while the paint on the door dries. I do want to mention very quickly that the fluorescent paints that I'm using are called Wildfire and is from Modern Masters. I'm not sponsored by any products or tools that I use in this video, it's just what I'm using. Additionally, I want to say that these fluorescent paints are very transparent. The yellow and green are especially see-through. Any blemishes or defects in the white base coats of paint are very visible. Due to how thin the paints are, every shape gets two solid coats of paint to make sure that the color is even and doesn't look blotchy. 
Though some shapes may look a little uneven to the naked eye in normal lighting situations, when they're under the black light, that all goes away and they fluoresce perfectly and look great. As a note, I painted these two crates on the top of the panel with darker colors to help add to that forced perspective look. Kind of like how in a painting, the different layers of mountains are a different color the further away they are from the viewer. While I have a moment, I wanted to mention the reason for this panel being painted black at the start of the video is because the plywood is from an old plain black panel that I had that I didn't need anymore. So I disassembled it, reconditioned the plywood, and used it to build this panel. The frame is actually an unfinished actor door panel that has been sitting outside my shop for several years that I also reconditioned to build this panel. I'm not sure why it never got finished, but I disassembled it as well, reconditioned the parts, and rebuilt it to what I have here. There actually ended up being a few holes in the plywood due to disassembling it from its original frame. I ended up strategically covering those holes with the white trim boards. Additionally, the original frame that the plywood was attached to was rebuilt into a second packing crate drop panel. Because the frame for this panel was rebuilt from an unfinished door panel, I assumed that I had originally made everything the same size as the door panel that I had recently made in a previous video. Unfortunately, I neglected to check my measurements, and there was a bit of a large gap on one side of the door. Not to worry, I can easily fill that space in with a strip of one quarter inch plywood, which is what I'm working on now. This isn't exactly my version of an ideal fix, but it'll have to do. Ideally, I would have either made the panel the correct size, or made the door a better fit. While the glue for the door spacer dries, I'm going to take this moment to finish cutting and painting the missing trim boards that I wasn't able to finish back when it was raining. A little something that I didn't mention earlier is that when I was planning out which crate was going to be which color, I actually took a still frame from my overhead camera and mapped out the colors using the image manipulation program. This way, it was easy for me to play around with where I wanted each color before I started painting. With all of the last trim boards finally made for the frame, I can quickly finish up cutting the few remaining boards for the door. Now that I have all of the missing trim boards cut to size, I can quickly paint them and get them caught up with the rest of the trim boards. I'm really glad that I was wearing this face mask when I was painting inside my shop because my paint sprayer was really kicking up a big cloud of paint. I really like how cool these shots look with how the parts start glowing as I paint them. Now that I finally have all of the trim boards coated with primer, white paint, and the fluorescent paint, I can start working on doing a dry brushing technique to make them look like old planks of wood. For those who don't know, the way that dry brushing works is that I dip my brush into the paint and scrape most of it off on the side of the can until there's very little left on the brush. Then I lightly run the brush over the surface of the boards, only allowing the tips of the bristles to touch the boards to get the desired effect. This panel is intended to be a part of a circus-themed haunted walkthrough attraction, which I want to make very whimsical and cartoony. That means that I'm not exactly going for realism with this thing, so I want to keep things broad, bright, and colorful. When I last made a panel that had this packing crate design, I mentioned that I felt that I went a bit overboard with the knots, and the boards ended up looking like they had a bunch of eyes. This time around, I'm going to put less knots on the boards and see how it looks.
With all of the trim boards fully painted and ready for assembly, I can move on to finishing up the little bit of work on the frame and then continue the dry brushing technique on the door and the framed panel. To start on this stage of the paint job, I decided to paint the knots and lines onto the panel first and then allow them to fully dry before I go in with the dry brushing. This way, I won't accidentally smear either of those two elements when I'm slapping the larger paintbrush all over the panel. The drop panel that I made a few years ago had six crates on it. This one has ten. Though there are more crates on this panel, when I was doing this part of the paint job, it felt like it went by a lot quicker and was much easier to do. Now that the lines and knots have had plenty of time to fully dry, I can move forward with dry brushing the wood grain onto the panel. I'm going to do a little bit of a truth time right now. At the time of making this panel, I hadn't done this kind of a paint job since I made the original drop panel a few years prior. I'm also doing this paint job based on what I remember doing, and prior to starting, I didn't look at or have the drop panel in front of me to see if I was making them look the same or not. I guess we'll both find out at the end of the video whether or not I was able to get them to match. With the dry brushing done on the panel, I can move on to painting the lines and the knots on the door. After those dry, I can finish up with the last bit of dry brushing on the door. I chose to paint the lines by hand instead of masking them off with tape and spraying them because doing things this way will make them look imperfect. If I sprayed them with tape, they would look too straight and too perfect, which would make them look weird. Painting the lines by hand adds to the look of these boards being old and weathered. After the lines and knots had time to fully dry, I moved on to the last bit of detail painting for this panel. I realized as I was working on this panel how much at every stage it looks like a nothing design all the way up until I nail the white trim boards to the front of the panel. Other panel designs that I've made look like something prior to the last step, but nah, not this one. It looks awful until the very end. Finally, the home stretch. I just need to glue and nail down all of the trim boards to finish the packing crate design. For this, I'll use small finishing nails and wood glue. The nails are to hold the boards to the panel and the glue is to keep the moisture and dirt from getting in behind the boards and causing any problems. These panels are made to be outside and in the weather for three months out of the year. That in mind, I need to make sure that everything has protection from the elements. That's why I would do the first coat of white primer on the trim boards by hand, and then spray on the other coats of paint and primer afterwards. I wanted to make sure that each board was completely coated on those skinny edges, and it's easier and less wasteful to do that with a brush than it is with a sprayer. Protecting everything from the elements is also why almost every board was fully coated on every side before assembly. 
I don't need all of this hard work rotting or growing mildew from the inside out when in storage for 9 months out of the year. I've put too much time, money, and effort into these things only to be able to use them for a single Halloween season. When I build stuff, I build it to last. I plan on being able to use these panels for decades to come and hopefully even long after I'm gone. I'm really curious if anyone actually watches the entire video. If you made it this far, leave a comment and let me know that you watched the whole thing. With the decorations finished on the front of the framed panel, I can finish up with attaching the trim boards to the door. So because the plywood for this project was from an old panel that was kind of falling apart to begin with, I had a bit of trouble getting these strips of wood nailed down because the plywood was warped and pretty wavy. Other than the rain, that's why I stopped in the middle of cutting the trim boards and took a break from it for a couple of days. Working in the cramped space, as well as trying to work with the curved plywood, was getting a bit aggravating. So I took a step back and approached it again when the weather cleared up and I had room to work on everything properly. Now that all of the decorating is finished on the front of the door and the panel, I just have to grind down all of those nails that are now sticking through on the other side. After grinding down all of the nails, I clean off all of the metal dust with compressed air and wipe it down with a rag. The rag will let me know if I missed anything sharp, because it will get snagged on whatever it was that I missed. Lastly, I primer anywhere where the bare wood is visible and paint the back with one coat of flat black paint and two coats of semi-gloss paint. So for the past few months, I've been leaving some food out for a stray cat that has been hanging around outside my shop. It looks like today she popped in to check up on my progress and to make sure that I'm staying on schedule. She's missing the top piece of one of her ears, so I'm calling her Chip, but mostly she goes by Kitty. To finish up the last bit of work on the panel, I just need to grind down all of the nails that are sticking out of the back, clean up the strip of wood that I had to add to the one side of the door frame, then primer, paint the same one coat of flat black paint, and do the two coats of semi-gloss paint hang the door back on its hinges, and it'll be all done. Since there's not much more that I can talk about at the moment, I'll check back in with everyone at the reveal of the completed panel in just a little bit. And there it is. It turned out exactly how I saw it in my head when I started this project. I'm super excited to use this panel in the haunted house that we do on our driveway this Halloween. 
So far, everyone that I've showed it to is very surprised that there is a door in the panel, so I think that I was successful in disguising it. Another plus is that without checking, I was able to replicate the paint job from the drop panel that I made from a couple of years ago. I'm really looking forward to building some more of these packing crate panels in the future and expanding on this section of my haunted attraction. So far, I've made a few videos about building and decorating haunted house wall panels, so be sure to check out those videos as well. Also, I've recently launched a Patreon page, so if my videos are helpful and you'd like to support me making more, please consider making a donation. Links for everything that I mentioned are in the description. And with that, I hope that this video was helpful or inspirational, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.